my name is Abhishek Jain and through this video I'm just gonna explain what is volume in a docker and why do we need a volume in a very first place. So let's try to understand this, this example. So usually what happens is for any of the application you know we want always wanted to have uh, our data which is persistent. So for example um, uh, in most of the databases right so we have an application then we have a database layer right and database is something which uh, stores our data. Right, and we always want that data to be preserved. Right. Similarly, in Docker container, there are two ways through which you can preserve the data. One is with Docker volume, and another one is you can mount your host machine folder or the directory location within a container, so that if you remove your containers, uh, if you remove the container, then your data will always remain there, and you can use that for a future purposes. Right. So, how we can uh, create the volume uh, in Docker? Right. So there is a command. This is the command line options which we have through which we can create a volume. But we're gonna talk about how we can use a Docker module of Python through which how we can create the volume and maintain the volume. But let's first understand what all options Docker provide us related to the volume. So we can create, as you can see on my screen, Docker volume gives me create, inspect, ls, prune, and rm. So we're gonna just see about all these options. So as I mentioned that you know, uh, for preserving a data we use docker volume and it is always recommended by docker that we should use a volume rather than mounting the host machine uh, location because that has some pros and cons and volume has its own pros and cons but the good part about the docker volume is uh, docker maintains everything for us and it is outside the container basically it is inside the docker uh, you know ecosystem but it is not linked directly with the docker container right so it becomes very easy if you want to share that data you know, uh, with other container uh, within a Docker, if it is, if your Docker daemon is running on a remote server, then also it is very easy to share the volumes, right? I mean, it is easy on, you know, host machine physical location as well, but volume has its own advantages, right? Um, so let's just see how we can create the Docker volume. So just to create a Docker volume, we have to just use Docker volume create, and then we have to just give the name, right? Apart from giving the name, there are a lot of, uh, you know volume drivers so by default if you do not provide any kind of uh, driver then what happens is now you, now you can see this when I just put this help menu for docker volume create then I can see this driver and this option so there are a lot of uh, you know drivers available in the market which you can search on the net and you can use it based on what exactly you want to preserve so there are cloud platform related plugins you know there are NFS you know so a lot of uh, you know drivers are there by default docker uses a local local means if you have your docker installed in a machine then within a blocker it is going to be saved right so right now what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna give this postgres data as a name because i'm just gonna use the postgres container where i want to preserve the postgres related data okay so the next command which we can use here is docker volume ls and now i can see the postgres data has been created for me now, just ex let me explain you what happens when you do not use these volumes to preserve our data. So here, what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to create uh, this Postgres data container uh, with the name Postgres instance one, right? I'll just provide all these links in the description, right? Okay. So now I can see we have Docker command which is running. Now I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna put some data inside this container. So I'm just creating a table now, okay, and I'm just adding bunch of data here. Okay, so I'm just gonna add three records inside this Postgres instance. So basically, now we have a test table created, and we have three records, and we can verify that. Okay, now we have three records, right? If I just kill this container, so basically if I remove this container, so what's gonna happen is I cannot have this data anywhere because along with, because I haven't used any volume, I haven't mounted any, you know, host machine directly. So what it's gonna do is if I just put Docker, stop and the container name, right? So I cannot use this data anymore because once I stopped it, uh, since I just ran this container with this dash dash rm command, so once it stopped it, it's going to remove, right? 
so there is nothing i cannot uh, you know preserve this data now what we can do is rather than you know running this without any volume mounted i can use this command where you can see i'm highlighting i'm using this dash b which actually help us to mount the volume and then we have to give a volume name column where i wanted to mount this volume so postgres suggests that you know if you want to save your database instance related data you have to preserve in this warlib postgres sql data you can you can just look at you know the official uh, postgres docker hub documentation and you will get that information okay so if i run this now if i just put docker ps and if i just call those commands like create table and then insert uh, let me just insert second to cut as well Okay, now I can see I have two records, right? What if if I stop this container? Okay, now I cannot earlier I cannot use it, but this time I have used this Postgres data volume to preserve my data. So what does it mean if I mount this postgres data volume to the different instance or different container of postgres i can use this data from that instance okay so let's see for that let me just so let me just show you we don't have any command running and let me just bring back that command through which i just created this container and this time what i'm going to do is i'm just going to expose the port on the end one and this time i'm just going to create a different postgres instance i'm calling it the postgres instance 2 but you will see here i'm just mounting a same volume right with the expectation is you know i will have the same two records under the test table okay uh, so let me just clear the screen and let me just bring this command where i was selecting records rather than selecting from the container i'm just going to select from the postgres instance 2 and i can see this data so now you can see it's very easy for me to preserve the data into the volume and then I, that volume i can mount it to any other container which can use the same data so that's the main use of volume right now as i mentioned you know you can use these options like if you want to inspect the postgres data you can see this the driver is local the mount point is warlib docker volumes okay you can see all these stuff and if you want to remove this you can also do that but uh, right now if you try to remove this let's see if what error you get into because right now it is being used by the container then it will say that volume is in a use so to remove this you have to stop the container first okay and then you can call this command now this time this has been gone and if you just create this volume again okay and you if you bring back this one and if you try to see whether this has that select data it will not because relation test is something so that is how you can use volume to persist your data so that's it from my side for this video uh, if you have any suggestion or any feedback for this video, just feel free to put that into the comment section and all the commands I have used in this video I'm just going to put that into the description so that you can use and you can play with that And as always, thanks for watching this and stay healthy and keep learning a new thing and, and one more point, right? Uh, how we can use a docker module of Python programming to manipulate the volume that we're gonna see in the next uh, Next video, which I'm gonna publish in a day or two. Okay. Thanks for watching this once again